Do you want to meet Corey Feldman and Jameson Newlander, the real Frog Brothers? Join us, the Frog Brothers Podcast, August 20th and 21st in San Antonio, Texas for the Summer of Santa Carla presented by Kings of Horror. Help celebrate the 35th anniversary of one of our favorite films, The Lost Boys. With screenings, autographs, artists, vendors, oddities, readings, comics, food, and more. Plus your favorite podcast hosts, Alec, Justin, and Nick. Go to socialrevoltstore.com for tickets and be sure to follow Kings of Horror on Instagram for updates. Looking to win tickets? Listen to the Frog Brothers podcast from now until the event and be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts for more chances to win. At Frog Bros Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter. We'll see you in Texas. Yeehaw! Hi, I'm Jameson Newlander, Alan Frog from The Lost Boys, and you're watching the Frog Brothers Podcast. What are we doing on it from a spooky ghost? It's refreshment time, folks. Are either one of these any good? Do you like scary movies? I don't watch movies. I have to return some videotapes. You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. I don't need a TV. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. Over 1,600 titles. Each were rented just $2 the first night and only a... <laughs> Television and on this invention, they show shows, right? Watch a few movies, take a few notes. Okay, one channels 18, 24, 63, 187, and weather channel. Welcome to the Frog Brothers Podcast with your hosts, Justin and Alec. Hello, and welcome to episode 120 of the Frog Bros Podcast. My name is Justin. I'm Alec. I'm Nick. And that's a Wilhelm scream. <laughs> that is Shao Kahn. It's not true. That is Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for a second. Yeah, I was like, God damn it. I always forget his last name. Wise ass. Uh, so tonight, tonight, tonight. Can you feel it calling tonight, in the air tonight? Tonight, tonight. Careful with that. Send him to it it's in the now? fucking VCR. Where That's a valuable VHS. You're not supposed you to keep watch it without f- us. Have you seen that before? Fuck yeah, I saw that on like the when that. it came out. It was a made for TV uh, movie. You I watched dick. it growing up. I don't know. You, you watched guys it in fucking seen it. school. Justin, do me a favor and look at what a terrible job you've done with the mic levels right here. Oh, I didn't know I set your level up. No, yours is like blasting. I know. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not as loud as you. So well, definitely on the ones where you're recording. From Remotely, home, yeah, it yeah. Just the levels for some reason just come through a little bizarre. But. And that's all a Zoom thing because I have great unity gain at my place, and I know I'm like sounding great. And then I listen back, and I'm like, why is it sound like I'm whispering? That's just because it records through the, the Zoom shit weirdly. I don't know what it is. I don't setting. know. I don't know. Hey, tonight we're gonna be talking about a movie called Wild Things, but we got a you whole list of shit dick? to get through before then. Do we? Yeah, I got some news, some more news. So I stopped by Walmart on my way over here, right? They're oh, re- remodeling this Walmart. Shit. So they got these Stranger Things flashlights. I mean, flashlights on sale for uh, $10 half off. So I picked up a couple more because they're fucking waterproof. Well, on clearance. In the clearance section, right? Yep. And they, and they come with the batteries, which alone is like $10 for two of those D-cell batteries. Ask your mom. She's probably bought a lot for her vibrator. I'm pretty sure years. those were $25 at uh, Target when I saw them. They were. Target was selling them for much more. And I'm going to have to... We're going to have to... Hold on. Something here. Something's going to have to happen here. Hold on. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Oh, um, no. We need, an, like, an apology podium or something. An apology podium? Yeah. Uh, it's just the, the, the remark there with, with the mom comment is not good. We're, we're beyond this, I think. I think. What, vibrator jokes? Uh, yes. No, Towards I mean... Towards each other's moms. Oh, it just, that wasn't oh, about was, our moms. It was, was like anyone's mom. He was talking to the audience's moms. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. fine, then. That's fine. I no, just... no, no, no. I'm, I was just talking about in terms of general. I mean, everyone likes to masturbate. I mean, your mom masturbates. Your dad probably masturbates. Your grandma might masturbate. Your grandpa might masturbate. You know? I mean, it's just a thing people do. For Shit, sure. dogs do it I all mean... the time. And the old school people I'm talking about in that generation didn't have lithium-ion rechargeable vat- batteries in their sex toys. They probably had the honk and see or D-cell batteries. I get it, right? All this talk about jerking off. I can probably guarantee that my grandma did not masturbate. No. <laughs> Does that terrify you a little bit? There's, no, I just don't really believe that she did. You never know. You'd have to, no. 
Um, they had like wooden so. dildos back in the day. Yeah. Why do you think they always made those spoons so smooth I like, think, in the kitchen? No, I think it was like a fear of hell thing. Yeah, but then you... No, no, no. Oh, you just asked for forgiveness. You, no, what listen, do you think the listen. Catholics do when they molest little boys? If, if you just straight up use the wood, it's porous. It's going to absorb stuff. That's mm-hmm. a one-use fucking dildo. Yeah. You get splinters in your vagina? Unless you wrap it in fucking horse intestine or pig intestine like they would have done. In the old school times, yeah. yes, old fashioned mm-hmm. times, or lacquered it and made it like yeah. all pretty and fancy. I can't get you pregnant. Let me go slaughter a goat real quick. Yeah, I'll be back in a second. That took a real fucking weird turn, but you know that's what we're here for. Yeah, I also picked up another Kenner Ecto One. These went clearance. They're down to thirty five dollars at some WalMarts. So this box is pristine, actually in better shape than the one they mailed me. But they had several of those. I got one, just one. Wasn't able to afford another clearance one, but... You know, I picked it up. I might flip it or just sell it to someone at cost just that didn't get one yet. Uh, I haven't decided, but I also might buy a sticker kit and do the GB2. I never had the GB2 as a kid, so I'm not... While like, we're in the news phase... Nostalgically tied to it. I'm going to announce that I have a Jones root beer soda because the gas station had... Uh, I wanted a root beer for the 35th anniversary of Lost Boys. Uh, oh. So That was yesterday. Is, yes. We are recording this the day after. Yep, so uh, we'll also be in, like, a little less than three weeks in Texas. Texas. And if you want tickets to this thing, we're giving tickets. them out. DM us on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere you follow us on social media. Hit us up and be like, hey, I want tickets to that. It's in yeah. San Antonio, Texas. Corey Feldman's going to be there. Jameson Newlander. Those are the Frog Brothers. Uh, G. Tom Mack, also known as Gerard McMahon in the past, who did the theme song Cry Little Sister. There's also going to be, uh, Billy Worth is going to be there. And Jason fucking Patrick is going to be there. So Mm -hmm. it's going to be a dope event, and if you want tickets, hit us up. It's going to be excellent. And, uh, yeah, reach out. See us there. We're going to have some cool stuff there ourselves. Mm Mm-hmm. We will have some things to give away, maybe some other things, uh... Things and stuff. And you can come see us in person, compare your height with us. But it's not every day you hit the 35th anniversary of one of your favorite movies. Nope. So we're pretty stoked on that. Uh, the other thing I will say about the 35th anniversary is the 4K Blu-ray is releasing on September 20th this year. It's got some controversial box art because no one knows how to use classic art for yeah, a 4K release. Yeah, we were trying release. to see if that was the actual... It is. Okay. That's what's listed on a bunch of stuff. I mean, it's stuff. not like... Listen, it's not horrendously bad, but it's just It's boring. bad enough we weren't sure if it was real. <laughs> yeah. It's it's better than a lot of things I've seen over the years as far as those remakes, but at the same time... It looks like the cheap Walmart covers that they put on like there. Yeah. I just thought they could have done a better job for the 35th anniversary, is all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, that's right. But maybe they didn't want to overdo the hype since they're rebooting the flick. The only ones know? that I liked where they did the Walmart slip covers is when they did the horror ones and they're black and they glow in the dark. Yeah, mm-hmm. those are legit. I like those, but even some of those are kind of bad just because it didn't come out well. But some of them look pretty good. So, mm-hmm. so we've got some other news to chit chat about. Uh, like what? Nichelle Nichols, rest in peace. Oh my she god, I'm so away. sick of those cringy ass fucking posts that the Star Trek fans keep. Just Everyone's everywhere. like posting the same thing on it's their so shows. A trend, cringy. like yes, I know no, no, she no, no, was. No, not that. It's the thing where they take like pictures from the original series Star Trek and they put little dialogue and it's all cheesy, going to heaven bullshit. Oh, You're like did they even believe in the afterlife in Star Trek? <laughs> no, they weren't religious. Yeah, so <laughs> <clears throat> humanity's religions were gone. Well, another reason to like Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! But yeah, people are being really cringy about it. It's gross. <sighs> Sounds like butt chugging. I mean, what I, what I mean by that is like, uh, you chugging the beer out of someone's ass. I mean, you only live once. Isn't that what the... Uh, I'm not kink Supreme- shaming anybody. If you've done that, call into the show right now. Isn't that what that Supreme oh. Court justice did? Clarence Thomas? No. No, I think he did... Uh, a child. Oh, he did the suppositories dipped in alcohol in his butt or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway. It was something with his butt. Yeah, he didn't way. want to smell like alcohol in his breath, but he wanted to be drunk, so he basically put the tampon in the vodka and stuck it up his butt. We hope all the bad yeah. things in life happen to him. Wish all the bad Kavanaugh. things in life happen to you and only you. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got a few other news items. So, Bill and Ted. Is this a dildo? Excellent Adventure is also getting a 4K Blu-ray release, limited edition on October... 11th, so looking forward to that. Very nice. Once I start buying 4Ks, I'll give a shit. 
Just the because you know one. some I'm, of them you just can't even find now. Like good yeah. luck. So it's fucking pointless to even try. Well, the fucking 4K Blu-ray players right now are asinine and expensive still. You're like, fuck you, it's a goddamn laser And light. I don't even have a 4K TV, so well, I don't own a single it's 4K. It's like buy a new Xbox or PlayStation instead of... Yeah. It's like when the original Blu-ray came out, just buy a PS3, you don't buy the... Yeah. Oh, no, the, that's what I've been waiting Blu-ray players on. were more expensive, and you don't get a video game system out of it. So. Yeah. No, but I, I also I don't it. have a 4K TV yet. So Same. Even though they're like half the price of my 1080 I got. Five years ago. <laughs> yeah, I've got the. F- I've just because that's a one 4K TV. I like it, but I don't know if it's worth going out and spending a lot of money on. If you're in the market for a new TV, great. If you're going to go buy one to upgrade, save your money. Yeah, and wait. Say I don't necessarily need one yet. Wait, but, but wait. I won't get one until I get a 4K player. Obviously, the Spirit Halloween trailer dropped. I didn't bother watching it. Yet. I watched it. It's yeah. Looks like a made-for-TV, like, 90s, yeah. nostalgic-style funny movie. I mean... Then hopefully, I, that looks sounds like, like my bag. looks like a Goosebumps movie. This sort of thing is my bag. Honestly, it already Lloyd. looks scarier than um, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark from the images I saw in it, which looks good. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't like Scary Stories. I know. I mean, I like the books, but not the, the movie. The movie just... I, I liked it other than it was... Tone for kids kind of just didn't go that. Yeah, I I would have loved that radar move. Similar to how I didn't even I didn't I I won't even watch the Goosebumps movies. Yeah, like it's just a shame. Like that's the movie concept you came out with. Yeah, fuck off. Oh, is that the one with Jack Black? Yeah, Mm -hmm. just eat my asshole on that one. (laughs) Yeah, he's not talking about the vintage made for TV movies, which kick ass. (laughs) Well, those weren't even necessarily movies. They were just the fucking TV show. Yeah, you could buy them. Sometimes they were like double part episodes, and you could buy them. Like I have the haunted mask; it's sitting right here, actually. Under, yeah, that was the, the first big one that came out. And I remember that. That's awesome. It's one of the most popular ones. It's it's arguably the one of the favorites. So. Mm-hmm. And then the Andor trailer yes. two dropped. That looks fucking good. I that also really didn't good. watch that. I didn't have a lot of time today, so oh. I know that dropped today, and I I'll get around to it though. That looks I'm really excited good. for that. Oh, the yeah. Big difference between that and a lot of the other Star Wars series right now is this is all shot on practical sound stages and stuff, so it's going to feel much bigger than some of the stuff you've seen in the other series. Yeah, it looks Not that they felt bad or anything, but I think it you're just going to... even more cinematic than yeah, normal Yeah, I think series. this is going to look more like a, a feature film. And Forrest Whitaker made an appearance in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm intrigued by like it. Like I said, by the writers of Rogue One, so it's the same Yep, production from people. the creators of Rogue One. Yeah. And uh, the only thing that Rogue One fucked up was Darth Vader. Sorry for uh, everyone who thinks it was like the ultimate Darth Vader, just because you got to see Darth Vader. Yeah, you got to see Darth Vader swing his lightsaber <laughs> around, which is totally out of character for him at that time frame. Obi Wan blew that one out of the park. The only thing that really bothered me about Vader and that is the voice just wasn't right. It sounded like old man. Well, it's because it was old man. Yeah, I mean he legit did Where, that dialogue. Whereas in um, Obi-Wan, it sounds just like the old well, Obi-Wan's AI, so it's a right. combination of all that. Uh, but three episodes drop for that series yeah, on September 21st. Yeah, so you're going to get basically three hours approximately of programming dropping all at once. Or an hour and a half, depending on how long the it's so weird yeah. how they episodes do that. are. They did that with the first four episodes of Twin Peaks, and I think it's because borderline nothing fucking happened in them. Like, it was a lot of slow going season, shit. Season three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like it took, I think they wanted to make sure they could hook people in enough. <laughs> yeah, you just get you get going through those episodes, and by then you've kind of picked up where you need to. Well, fucking a. What'd you do? Drop your phone. As David Lynch would say, "Fucking a, man." Who gives a fucking shit? That man's a fucking legend. Fucking a, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel better about my daily life hearing that, don't you? Yeah, it just makes you feel better. It's like therapy. Uh, that's pretty much most of what I had written down for news and shit. Okay. News and shit. Well, I guess we're gonna move on to... This is Top 5. This is Top 5. Nickel Top Guys. And bottom occasionally. Nothing wrong with that. Well, There's nothing better worrying. than doing both at the same time. You being in a sandwich? We call it the human centipede. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, the top five movies of 2022 so far. That we've seen. <laughs> well, clearly, you had to have seen it to have it on your list. Well, I guess maybe you don't. Maybe uh, That we've individually seen. Maybe you're I've a liar. I've seen movies, Justin hasn't, and probably vice versa. Maybe. 
Yeah. What's your favorite porn you've seen this year? I haven't watched any new one. I don't watch traditional porn anymore. It's just boring. I, I see the clips. I There's too much like custom. Content. What do you mean by traditional porn? Missionary. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not talking. I mean, that like shot where it's the guy's bubble. a porn that's not like live or like someone's custom content they're selling, right? So it's traditional. Uh, like it'd be marketed as a DVD or a specific website for like this brand or a production company. Okay, I don't think anyone has in like twenty or years or so. Well, they still make it though because there's, movie? there's old people Truckers out there do. still. Truckers. Oh well, yeah, because they don't always have good internet <laughs> access. Yeah, they're all over that shit. Truckers. That's a good point, Nick. You're out there sticking up for the little guy. What I'm saying is. Pornhub is basically the YouTube of porn at this point, so those production companies also upload those videos to that and let you view a certain percentage of them for free and whatnot without mm -hmm. having to do anything, and then they you could also sign up and pay for them or whatever, but they also get paid you, for you, views because of the ads and shit. You get yeah. the full scenes. And that's how other people... Base their base, models off Well, that. they do that, yes. other Like OnlyFans models have Pornhubs to promote their OnlyFans. Mm. So you get uh, whatever and, they uh, have there. Plus. Sites like Minivids where they upload their videos you can buy. And mm -hmm. Let's not uh, not mention Xvids. It's a pretty good site, too. I like the Xvids. Uh, well, see, Pornhub, it, people had problems with for a while, but the good thing about it now is it's mostly hard to upload of, like, uh, porn of fucked up shit and porn of... The like, eight. there's no... Tag, you can't tag things about rape anymore there. You can't tag things about... There's a big lots. loophole on rape, though. They're supposed to have this big stand against rape scenes, but there's constantly rape. Like, scenes where the girl gets stuck in the dryer. Well, yeah. And the guy just sure. comes up in her and just... In her, you know, that's rape. Well, yes. But, but they it's won't... not simulated rape. I'm saying girls... you can't call it that. But I've seen the videos on there where the girl's crying and saying, stop. I don't I don't know what they classify as bad rape. I don't yeah. know. But I'm saying it's also they verify uploads on Pornhub as opposed to like most ages, sites. Their age and stuff too. Yes. They well, to even have a Pornhub account and upload a video now, you have to scan your ID and shit. And then if you upload a video with someone else in it that's not you, at any so you time Pornhub can, well. yes, they'll request the ID if it gets significant views. Hmm. And they'll if you don't yeah, provide it, take it down. The intention of that is to make sure there's no one underage on there, and there's, there's no, no revenge, revenge porn. porn. Yep. What if your what if your cat's things. walking around in the back? There's people doing loopholes though. You, occasionally, you'll see some weird shit that's like, oh, this is a bunch of other people's shit uploaded by one person. This is not. Why, yeah. why, why don't people lock their animals out of the bedroom when they make these videos, like on OnlyFans and stuff? They're like sitting there just going at it with a dragon, you know, and there's the fucking kitty. Then the girl looks at the cat and laughs. Because it's real life. And I'm like, it just takes, yeah, I don't it, know. Just, it just takes me out of it. It doesn't bother just, me. It simulates me real life. life. Nick, do you hey. have cats and dogs? Because I can tell you that happens in real life to me all the time. But yeah. if you're going to make if a you've video, never been licked by an animal where you're going at it with somebody, you're and you're like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you're making a product and making a video. Are you telling me you don't stick peanut butter on your ass so when you're doing it missionary you get make, your ass licked when too? When you're making a video, lock the animal out. That's no. That's that's how you would do it. If you're the producer of those videos, you I mean, can do that. But at the same time, you could just say the same for cleaning their apartment or... Yeah. Well, then it's like animal. Flushing Anything your toilet, like all that kind of stuff. Cleaning your fucking mirror, brushing your teeth. Then I feel like I'm watching animal porn. I don't know about that. If they're I not mean, sexualizing the animal, then why does it feel like animal porn? It's if on it the just, bed while it's happening. If it just walks by or something... <laughs> all right, no. <laughs> I'm scared You're basically you, saying that... What if, what if she pets it while she's... She is petting it. No. The, <laughs> I was going to say, that's the double entendre the there. Separate. Oh, the other pussy. While she's... I don't know. I guess that, yeah, that's kind of fucked that's, up. that's pleasurable for the cat <laughs> being pet. So then the cat's being pleasured while she's pleasuring her... No. <laughs> then, you know, the animal didn't get consent Somebody in the video. Just tuned out. We need to move along. Um, <laughs> we need to move along to the top five movies here. In case you forgot what we were Wait, doing. What are you looking for? We had a point. <laughs> Shut this off. Shut this off. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry for that. We go off on tangents sometime. And if you're just rejoining us, welcome back to the top five. <sighs> top five gonzo scenes of 2022. Number five. Nick, what's your number five? Gonzo scene? I put the black phone. Starring... Ethan Cock. Ethan H Hawk. Almost said Ethan Hunt. Uh, Tom Cruise's character from <laughs> Impossible. 
Yeah, I, I need to check that out yet. I've heard good things about it, but I have not seen it. Yeah, it's definitely a trendy, popular... It didn't get a theatrical release, did it? I'm not sure. So no, it did. It, I saw the posters. Yeah, so my number five is... Uh, I've got two written down for my number five, but I'm going to go with Jackass Forever because that was just nostalgic for me and stupid. Oh, that's a bummer because I watched it and I was thoroughly and horribly disappointed and was like, oh... I was Bummer. Never, I was never into that stuff. I enjoyed it just because it was fucking stupid, and they had new people getting fucked up on there. Like, it's yeah, almost they're depressing. Too they're it's, too old to get fucked up. It's depressing know. watching old people, like, hurt themselves like that. Like, Jesus Christ, you're going to end up in a fucking Jackass home. Jackass 3 was, like, super good, I thought, when it came out and everything. And Yeah. I'll, I I have the set of all three movies and their alternate editions and the other the bad grandpa shits in there because it was, like, 13 bucks at Walmart one time. Mm-hmm. And that stuff's nostalgic for me also. But, like... This one dish did, didn't do it for me. I was having a bad time watching. I was like, this is fucking... Hmm. I need something else. So it's a legacy sequel? Basically. <laughs> I mean, they're just fucking around and doing what they do. New people. I had fun with it. Anytime like you can laugh that hard without having to need a story or anything besides stupidity, it's refreshing for modern culture. Because I know a lot of people out there that make me want to hurt myself. And it's better to watch someone else hurt <laughs> themselves than to do it to myself. Why don't you just hurt them? Don't hurt yourself. <sighs> My number five is... <laughs> That'd be a cliche white man thing to do. Scream. Okay. Um, if I was going to rank it within the Scream movies, it wouldn't be near the top. But I like horror movies, and I like... Wait, wait, wait. It's wait. nostalgic for me. We did rank the Scream movies, didn't we? Yeah. So I did see this. Mm-hmm. I just buried it deep down. Um, so I remember doing the, the Scream ranking, I think. Yeah. Or maybe not. I, <laughs> I didn't hate Scream. I just uh, haven't had the desire to go back and watch it. I'm just like, eh, Yeah, whatever. that's kind of part of how I'm it. ranking, like, would I want to watch this again? And I've watched it again. But it's it's to me, it's just like how in the Halloween movies or the Friday the 13th or the Nightmare on Elm Street, any horror series that has a lot of fucking movies in it, Scream only has five. That's still nowhere near as many as even Nightmare on Elm Street, which has like six or seven. I think seven with versus. Yeah, so... Still not not even as many as that. Um, I don't know. You I think like it's run out of steam. It's not nothing new to offer. Well, it, the thing with Scream Six is I don't think it has anything to offer. With this one, they had ten, eleven more years of horror movies to rip uh, on yeah. and kind of reference and stuff like that. Now they they don't have that. The only thing that's relevant to them specifically is, the is Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. That's the only because they came back and did similar. other sequels. So are you going to just riff on that? And in that case, <sighs> they should do where you erase Evil every, dies every tonight. S- no, you do. You erase every sequel since the first one. Right. I don't know how they would do that in the screen. <laughs> Nev Campbell's not coming back for six. Yeah. And Dewey's dead. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't give a fuck. I don't think I did watch this last one because I didn't see. Dewey I don't die. care about Courtney Cox's character. The one thing I do care about is Kirby from Scream Four is coming back. I don't like her character a lot, but uh, yeah, that's about it. That's my number five. All right, that's fair. What's Nick. your number four? Uh, from number four, I put nope. Me too. Which we are going to reviewing discuss. this week. I'm going to be on it. It's a hard tears. disagree, but I get it. No, that's not a reflection on it's not good. Just. There's three movies I'd rather watch again, or maybe had more, fu- you know, just more my. Hmm. All right. I, What's your I mean, if these four? are top five movies of the whole year so far, it's obviously. What was yours? You're in, you're in the middle of one. I did. Nope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah my exactly. number four is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um, because yeah. we just get so far into the Marvel stuff that you stop giving a fuck at some point, but also it was a dope Sam Raimi movie. I still had a really fun time watching it. I don't, I don't ever feel like I ever want to watch a Marvel movie again, though. I re- watch them all the time, so... The only reason I would is I, if, like, there's a TV show I need to, like, refresh myself on or a I've movie. probably seen the first Avengers movie, like, ten times. I've probably seen Infinity War, well, like, five or six times at this point. Especially the more recent films. I'm never like, uh, like, oh, I gotta see that again. <clears throat> and the Spider-Man ones I rewatch a lot. Even some, like, first Iron Man and the Captain America movies I watch a lot, there's too. There's a lot of rewatchability in that. In the original, the first phase. It just depends and, on what you're you know, in. I, yeah. I, I really like those. But this one had some missing beats for sure, but I also... I feel like they underutilized the multiverse aspect of it, though. 
I think they cut a lot too. of shit out through editing, which is unfortunate. But I think it wasn't what I expected. But it was still definitely fun. wasn't what I expected. Yeah. yeah. What's your number three, Nick? Uh, I put the Gray Man. The Gray Man. I didn't um, see that. Netflix for free. If you want to watch it. Ryan Gosling and Captain America. There you go. Anthony As Mackie, the bad guy. Anthony Mackie's the villain. Chris Evans is the villain. Anthony Mackie's Captain America now. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> He's being a smart ass. <laughs> I was sitting there thinking, well, well, it is a thing that on name, the internet. Uh, everyone's so everyone's bitching because of you call what? former presidents Mr. President. Still, it's the same thing. Well, no, that's not what I mean. Hmm. I'm saying they refuse to acknowledge oh, yeah. Anthony oh, Mackie not, as Captain America. I'm not doing that. I'm looking forward to that. They're movie. the same that's people. Fine. They're bitching about Captain Marvel having a a black version. They're it's they're what's, like you know Marvel's woke. What's the black? Because women and people of color exist. What's the black yeah. version? Monica Rambo, and then there's oh. Miss Marvel, which is oh, yeah, yet another yeah, yeah. version that's a woman who is uh, uh, I, I don't I don't know. She's Muslim, I guess her character, but I don't know about if that her ethnicity. Like ethnicity. She plays a Pakistani. I think that's her family's origins. In I there. watched the first two episodes, but I was kind of oh Miss Marvel. So, yeah. I haven't watched it yet, but I will. I liked it. It's kind of a small stakes show, but that's fine because it you're had vibes to... of the first Spider-Man movie. You're actually to getting to know the character of this one, and that the makes homecoming. Sense. I mean, yeah, yeah, just because it was kind of goofy, but also, mm-hmm. teenage problems, right? Teenager. Yeah. So my number three was Doctor Strange. Um, for this movies this year, I definitely liked that a lot better than Thor. Yeah. And it's a Sam Raimi movie. When yeah, I watch it I, just as a Sam Raimi movie, there's some that. legit fucking amazing scenes in there. When I watch it as a Marvel movie, I'm like, yeah, okay. Doctor Strange being in a zombie body is pretty cool. I mean, stuff like that, that's why it ended up on the list. Um, if they lean more into the multiverse aspect, I'd probably rank it higher. But yeah, I, I wanted think, to see more. It just feels like they cut yeah. out a lot of stuff that they... Not just them falling through different universes. I wanted to see them really Yeah, you visit. didn't spend any time in them. You're and just like they, briefly the there. The one they well, spent most time in was only slightly different. So. But when you he- think about this, too, they were they were they they delivered on the whole thing of when you go to see a Marvel movie now, you want you want to see some new characters. You want to see cameos and stuff. And they did deliver with that, with mm-hmm. having Mr. Fantastic, Professor fucking Xavier, Black Bolt from the Inhumans, um, Monica Rambeau, Camp to Marvel... Um, what's her face? Captain Carter. Mm-hmm. All that stuff was really cool yeah, to see in live action. They had good cameos there, but that was just really a small part of the movie. I so. agree. I agree. But it it did pay off in that aspect of like, oh, I got some cool shit out of this that was really exciting. But it, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things. Mm-hmm. My number three was Fresh. Remember? You remember Fresh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Fresh was awesome. I thought it was. I didn't even think about fucking that. powerful cannibalist fucking fucked up movie. I liked reviewing that because none of us had Stan. seen it before, and we all enjoyed it and had a good time talking about. Yeah, it. that one yeah. holds up. I might even swap that out with Black Phone. I'm not sure, but if I, I did enjoy it, that one. I didn't put that on my list. Um, I didn't even think of it. See, every- I don't even know how rewatchable it is for me, but it was like I was blown away watching well, that's it. Like one of those movies where a big part of it is the twist, and now that you know the twist, it's. Yeah, it, it felt fresh, though. It didn't remind me of anything I'd seen, so That's I always appreciate movie. a movie like that that doesn't feel like I've seen it a thousand times when it's, and you're like, oh, okay, this is just a derivative of that. Well, right. You had small vibes of like, okay, there's a little bit of American Psycho here. There's a little bit of Silence of the Lambs, clearly, but like, not to the point where that's all you're thinking about or anything at all. It's like, you're just enveloped into yeah. the, the story. That was good. Yeah, no, I agree. That's a good one. Number two. Number two. I put Top Gun Maverick. Mm-hmm. Oh fuck! I didn't even put that on my list. Yeah, I thoroughly. I en- just realized I forgot that entirely. I thoroughly enjoyed the film, especially for someone who was never like a huge. I'm not going off scream for Top Gun, and that, that's actually a very fucked up thing to say because the first scream I would watch over top the first Top Gun, but by the time we're talking about the sequels, that's fine. You can knock scream off this. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> You're just making Nick happy by saying that. Nick's <laughs> like, God damn, he's finally figured. Either it out. it's mm. Scream or Doctor Strange, but gets the kick. Scream was number five, so I'm just going to kick it for the now. But That's I'll fair. put Top Gun at number five because that whole side chick story was fucking lame. And there was could have been some cuts on that movie, but overall it was dope. And also the only other thing is it is military propaganda in a little bit, so that's kind of fucked up too. But as a film, mm. two thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's conflicting things. I mean, you, I got to acknowledge all the things about it. You yeah. know, that's all. Exactly. Be aware of what you're watching. 
Yeah, don't just blindly. Don't be accept. like. Don't man. go sign any government papers. Yeah, don't be fucking joining the navy after you watch the fucking Top Gun movie. <laughs> you fucking moron. <laughs> I'm talking to fucking you. Yes, you. If you if you think I'm talking to you right now, I am. War profiteering is killing us all. So, my number two. Number two. Number two. My number two is the Batman. My number two is also the Batman. My number. <laughs> my number one is also the Batman. I enjoyed that. Or it was number fun. One. It was fresh. It was a uh, a good Batman film. I love the detective aspect on it. We, we just haven't it seen fresh. it. That's what the Rotten Tomatoes does. We can't use that. I need to watch it again. I need so to buy I, it and watch it again. I haven't watched it since the theater, and I did watch it again uh, when it hit streaming. What do you think? Hold up. Yeah. I need to. Ch- I just need another viewing because I watched it with Brian. It did drag and his on, wife. and near the ending, I was just like, wait. It, what's happening there's like, some, there's it some feels drag like, it, if it, it, if it felt was like edited a little tighter yeah the last like 40 30 or 40 minutes felt like I was watching Dark Knight Rises again where it's just like we're flooding the city and I was oh, wait what it's not perfect for sure yeah I mean I still no. but it's like you know if you're a big Batman fan it's just porn so you're just watching porn and you're fine yeah yeah I mean it. I like the detective aspect of we just hadn't seen that really in a movie stakes before so that really kind of made it a fun movie for this year for me so far. All right. So your number one was The Batman. Yes. Your number one is Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> My and number I, one is Nope. Yeah, I got to say Top Gun Maverick for me, like that's a movie. I love Top Gun as a kid with no political or military agenda. I just love the fucking action of it, the coolness of it. And then this one like held up and was actually a worthwhile story. I'm curious how well it's going to hold up watching it at home, even on a 70-inch screen or whatever. I mean, I think it's a lot of it is spectacle. The the first Top Gun still holds up well, even in the plane scene, so I think it will. But for me, like, I was never a huge Top Gun fan. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the home video release, which right now they say is December, which I don't know why they're taking so fucking long for that. That's a long time for a modern... You're basically, uh, what is it? They could have literally had them printed and just stored by now. Mm -hmm. Like, literally for years at this point. Yeah, <laughs> is this still is this still at the theater? Is like some theater uh, still, still showing? Yeah, probably still, a couple here and there. Why it's, it's still being played? But yeah, I mean, I think the theatrical window though is only like sixty well, days now for a lot of people. When I worked pictures. at AMC back in the day, there were two movies that in two thousand nine were at our theater so long that they were on DVD also at the same time. Well, we still have happen, yeah. It was The Hangover. The people still go and to Blind see Side. It. Well, so unfortunately, people. T- yeah. Sandra Bullock football movie. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> You're going to say something, whatever. So, nope, if you want Alex's in- opinion on nope, you'll have to come back and chat with us later. Yeah, all I'll say is that I thought it was fucking brilliant, and I had a super great time watching it, and for the, f- you know, not many movies can make me feel like any sort of anxiety or f- or horror movies, you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. they don't make me feel, like, fucked up at all, like, anymore, usually, for the most part. Like, it's pretty rare. And this one had two parts where I was like sitting there very uneasy while I was watching, oh, uncomfortable. There's one part I wonder if it, for you too. Or not. Well, in general, honestly, the the uh, let's not call it cruelty to animals because it's you know it would be spoilerish to talk about what is actually going on. But like, there's a lot of animals that are just like uh, kind of fucked over, and that's kind of just a little jarring in general. But like the movie itself. It's still brilliant. I mean, just because the movie is doing that two things in the movie, it didn't happen in real life. You know, those those horses are fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe. So, no, I get what you're saying. There. There I mean, be. either that or I used them to glue this fucking thing over here today. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they still do that? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're going to jump in. We're talking. You know what I just watched? Me pulling a can off some morons. Best. Return of the Jedi. Did you see Alien? When that uh, creature was in that guy's stomach? Oh my god. Oh my god. You ever seen that really old movie? Uh, Empire Strikes Back? Jesus, Tony. Welcome to Retro Release Reviews. Julie. We're not going to talk about Julie. We're not going to talk about Julie at all. She owned this movie. I can't help you, Nick. Until she died. All right, so tonight's feature film is Wild Things from 1998, directed by John McNaughton. McNaughton. This That's a pretty good fucking cast. Titties, titties, This is a high-budget Cinemax ass. porn. Uh, in a way, yes, but... It's sleazy. There's nudity. This 
There's is, a stack kind of music. But it's better written than that, though. This movie is Well, yeah, they, they paid for a higher... The movie. Exactly. It's schlock like, the movie. Exactly. It, is, it is meant to be that way. It's intended and it pulls to be it the fuck off. Mm-hmm. It's so enjoyable. Yes, it holds up so well. Like you're like, oh, this was a movie I not I have not watched a lot, but every time I watch it, I'm like, yeah, I should see that. More. I love it's the good. music too. Yeah, very fitting. Music, and like, yes. it's like in the '90s when they did that sort of like reminiscent of '70s funk stuff. It, mm-hmm. I, That's exactly what this is doing. I like the uh, after the end, and they're showing the behind the the stuff you weren't supposed to see. Yeah. It was supposed to be a twist, and the boy, they are playing the music really fit there, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. That's, like, the post-credit scenes there, the mid-credit scenes, and everything is great. There's no post-credit scene. Well, this is the, the movie. I was telling that story when I was, like, 15, and my friends went to see it, and my mom took us, you know, dropped us off, and the theater owner's like, there's nudity, male and female, and all this other shit. My mom, oh, yeah, because you my see... My mom's like, I don't give a fuck. You see Kevin Bacon's bacon. It looks so weird. Well, it doesn't look weird. What it, no, he it, has it, a it looks he has like paper mache. It's because he has probably a fifty percent chub going on, so he doesn't look tiny on camera, which is a, what almost every male mm, actor does uh, when they appear on camera. I don't, I don't mean it that way. I don't know. Maybe it was the yeah, lighting just, or something. It's just it looked. He didn't want to have a full rager, but he wanted to have a little blood flow. You just don't want to look like you're tiny. Well, yeah, if you're a grower, yeah, not a that's shower, what it is. you want to grow it a little bit. Either way, you want to make it look bigger. Exactly. That's what the, <laughs> every actor will do if they're going to appear naked. Unless the joke is that it's small and you're Ken Jeong. Yeah, and then you're just <laughs> fucking monetizing off that, yeah. right? And he's aware of that, and he's good with it. So He looks like a fucking button, and he's like, whatever, I'm a millionaire. So Yeah, he's like, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> My button's been in a lot of mouths. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so Kevin Bacon, Matt Dillon, Nev Campbell, Denise Richards, Bill fucking Murray... Robert Wagner and Daphne Rubin Vega are just a few of the cast members you may recognize. Who's that? Who's the last one? She plays Gloria Pierce. No, oh, no, no, no. What do I? What would I know her from otherwise? Exactly. I don't know. Look her up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, Matt Dillon is lecturing on sexual harassment. That's funny. He writes up sex on the board, and they're all like, "Woo!" Boner titties. Well, you see him mm-hmm. walking outside on campus into the building, and all the girls hey, are we, checking him out. And you, you can't skip the fucking alligator intro because the fucking alligators just keep showing up in random cutscene edits throughout this whole fucking movie. It's alligator, alligator, like iguana, are you alligator. Sure it's, it's not a crocodile. Is that a new game? Alligator, alligator, iguana. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yes, it's a replacement for duck, duck, goose for anyone that's scaly or who lives in Louisiana. Louisiana, yeah. Um, I like it when uh, Denise Kelly is uh, sitting in the fucking audience or whatever and, like, looking on stage, and somebody, the dude next to her tries to, like, check out her neck collar, oh, yeah. and she just goes, fuck off! Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, all right, I like her. I like mm-hmm. this. The guys in the audience are so douchey with their comments and their high fives and the laughs. Well, it's and typical high school bullshit, but, like, amplified to fucking ten is all they have is, like, the jock type in there. Like that stereotype there. And Susie, we, we would have been escorted out by police if we made anywhere near that kind of noise during a right. assembly or whatever. Where there are actually police, <laughs> the ones are talking to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's where you see Ray and Gloria sitting there as part of this sex panel. Susie's like, this is bullshit. I'm not listening to these motherfuckers and leaves. Because mm-hmm. of uh, him guy. being up there. It's all part of their plot. Because Kevin Bacon we'll into. killed her friend Davey. Yeah. Um, boating class. Jimmy and Sam at sailing course. So he's the, the guidance beautiful. counselor and the sailing sail instructor. Boat yeah, instructor, because at yeah. schools, a lot of teachers pick up double duty for athletic mm. stuff bullshit. So, um, like is a, that Smash Mouth doing Why Can't We Be Friends? Yes, it is. <laughs> Was there more than one Smash Mouth song in this? Or I don't know. I it's very timely. They it play like very... three or four very timely songs in like a short... <laughs> hey, speaking of Smash Mouth here, I'm going to go on a tangent real quick and we'll circle right back. But that first Smash Mouth album is like third wave ska besides the Walking on the Sun, like the big radio hit on that. But the rest mm-hmm. of that's like, you're like, who the fuck are you? Real Big Fish? Mighty Mighty Boss Tones? Like, what are you guys doing? Because my dad had that and I listened to it and I was like, remember not hating the rest of the album and you're like huh that's interesting and you look back now and it's very cringe but at the time i was like "Hmm." as a person who is very very i'm into like you fucking hate one ska ska band the specials and uh and that's traditional like two-tone ska yeah that's very uh 
different. Yeah. That's all I want. Well, that's I why I had to that. clarify third wave, so. Um. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. My DVD of this, which is right there in the front, is full screen. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but you watch it on a widescreen TV, it stretches it even weirder. Hmm. Because it filled the TV. Oh, yeah, because that's what it's made to well, do. you should yeah. have... And the pan and scan is super fucking weird in this movie, let me tell you. Because it's built into this like it would be on a VHS, because it's full screen. So I kept noticing all the times they're pan and scanning in this, and it's up. Like so obnoxiously noticeable. Um, yeah, see, I did the 30 day trial of Showtime through Apple. Yeah, I still got Showtime. So that's and what I because I needed it. that to watch Robocop. So then when I saw this was on there, and I was like, oh, fuck, all right, this works. <laughs> what else is on yeah, Showtime? Showtime's been paying off for me. Yeah, I was going to say, and I've just got a 30 day free trial. So um, I have the widescreen version of the DVD of this movie, though. You get the car washing bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kelly's and, uh, flirting up with uh, Sam there and her friend. She's like, yeah, leave. I'm going to try to fuck the guidance counselor, basically. And, and she then, gets all wet. Yeah. Then she's standing soaking wet in the living room, and then here's the continuity air that pissed me off. She fucking leaves, and she's fully dry. Like, her hair is dry. Well, they all out. of her clothes are dry. They hunt out for a while, you know, talking about their scheme. Yeah, but then she, then she walks down the road, like, all pissed off because she doesn't get the ride she wants. No, it's for witnesses, for witnesses to see her leaving with yes. her yeah, yeah. clothes ripped up and her pissed off and running. And Yes, but I'm just saying like that. That's yeah. how I watch the movie too, Nick. When you know the secrets, you're watching it right. from that perspective <laughs> as opposed to when you watch it the first time, you're like, what's... Why is she you dry? Know, that's different. Um, Robert Wagner, which is funny because we just did Austin Powers. Uh -huh. <laughs> he plays such a it's different like character say, here. It's like the year after too. Yeah. Yeah. Um... She tells the story to police after she tells her mother and does that whole thing where she's, you know, shooting, skeet shooting or whatever. Yeah. I was raped. What? That was a... Uh, that's traumatic to hear that, though. Like, because that's just something you don't ever want to hear someone say. Like, no matter I think what type of human being they are. Like, you don't want anyone hey, to deserve wait, that. Hey, wait. Before we go on, let's... I've, I've, I know I've said it as well, but let's try not to say it as many times so you two won't get triggered by us saying that word. Okay. What code? Let's say S.A. What, what code? Oh, yes, an S.A. Yes. S.A. As in... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, good call. Well, I was going to say, I think the mom is the worst actor actor in this film. Important safety tip. Yeah, I think she you're right. She feels like they got her out of a Cinemax mo she, movie. Well, she's just so over the top and like kind of that yelly bitchy lady and like she does it well for what she's maybe this, doing maybe but this just, character wasn't just wasn't for her i don't know maybe she's a good actress otherwise but. um i love when bill murray's introduced and he has the neck brace yes what's, what's with the neck brace what this i don't have to wear it all the time there was an insurance guy there here was earlier an insurance guy around here earlier <laughs> yes yeah, yeah fucking love it and he's such a good fucking lawyer in this it's so weird when he takes it off in court though like, who's he wearing it for if he's not worried about wearing it in court? Well, he just won the case, so he just didn't give a fuck at that about point. About anything. Yeah. <clears throat> he knew he was going to have a lot of money. So. I'm going to get to run off the road by the uh, guy that's fucking the mom now. Mm-hmm. And I didn't remember that. Up. I didn't remember that part. I didn't remember him, like, getting thrown off the road and then rolling down into the water upside down. I didn't remember that. It, it's a pretty quick fucking scene, too. Yeah, it doesn't really pay out like you'd expect. I mean, it's just kind of one of those quick things that's easy to miss, but it's interesting. And the, <laughs> the cops go and can get a story from Susie, basically. Mm -hmm. They go over there and they meet her. Well, she calls them over, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She in, yeah, she invites them out. And that's the first time we see, uh, is that her brother that's the alligator wrangler? And he's like, oh, he's showing off for you right now. Uh, he's slapping the alligator's yeah. mouths and shit. Uh -huh. I'm Hold, like, this guy deserves to lose a finger. Yeah. I'm well, telling you. What, what, what is the deal with that? Is it like... They weren't blood relatives, and it was also like a bordello or something, right? Or was that a different place? I'm not sure. That whole little sub, that weird little plot there, that it's, it's, yeah, doesn't check out fully for me. Um, the case happens in court, and Bill Murray, of course, uh, you know, what appears to happen is that he wears Susie down, and she admits the truth. Mm-hmm. And then there's the courtroom fight where uh, Kelly tries to attack her and the case is dismissed, and basically. Mm -hmm. And motherfucker then is out of jail and is like... Defamation lawsuit. Exactly. Settlement time. Mm-hmm. Now, the other thing you can't forget in there, because it comes back later, is when Gloria's interviewing Kelly, she's like, 
He didn't finish. He says, oh, uh, no little girl can make I, me. I, I wouldn't say that on YouTube. Either. Yeah, no little girl can make me explicit. <laughs> and they come back to that later on. You're like, what the good. fuck? There's nothing good that can come. But that's that's one of the <laughs> most fucked up parts of to bring you this important message. <laughs> I'm just telling you, somebody wrote this movie. About to see and hear uh -oh. is explicit. Why does that sound that way? Trial mode, bitch. <laughs> and you call yourself our producer, but you don't know why it sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's producing fear erections, is what he's doing. My friend, don't be a jerk. Fight or fuck. But, uh... But, what's her name? Who? Scream Woman. Susie. Susie Campbell is Susie, Susie in this movie. Yeah. And she says a slight variation on that. No yes. little bitch will make me come. I, you didn't have to say the last part, okay? I can say come. You can say come all you want. Yeah. Yeah. Just not in the first 30 seconds. You just can't say literally <laughs> there's like the C word on YouTube. Con country? <laughs> tis My country thee. tis of thee. <laughs> Sweet land of Nick doesn't get social cues. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that guy. You can't say, you can't say the N-word either, Nick. Okay, just making sure. Nicaragua? I just just had to be sure there. Cut the mic. Um, yeah. Niger? The country? The Trump pronounced <laughs> I fucking hate you. <laughs> oh, my God. I said Niger. Uh, Nigeria? Oh no! I'm sorry. You can cancel us right now. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just take these two, earbuds I out and uh, head out of here. Countries is all I said. I don't, I don't even have a sound bite for this. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do realize how that might make <sighs> us look. And we can't say the R word. Yeah, that's a given. Yeah. What else? Runza. You ever had a Runza? It's a fast food chain in the Midwest. <laughs> what? A Runza? You never had a Runza? Okay, never mind. I live in the Midwest. Fuck I heard it. it. <laughs> what do they sell? Runzas. Runzas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a food. <laughs> yes, it's a it's a type of food. It's not true. So, <laughs> so most of the word is runs, like when you have diarrhea. I mean, I don't have diarrhea usually anymore, but if you do, but runs. <laughs> the, what are we talking about? <laughs> We're trying to get you to stop saying offensive shit. While we try to skirt I don't around you and say other oh, you shit. said you said the word. <laughs> oh, no, you said come and... No, wait. The context I was saying, I the phrase come. I said specifically, I, I didn't feel... I said come, and you said I couldn't say come. And then I said, we can say come, but we can't say these words. <laughs> it's a good thing that we're not, like, super popular and, like, on a live podcast that's getting that would be getting shut down and <laughs> we would get a strike and be banned for a week. Because we've said the R word, the C word, and a version of the N word borderline. I didn't so, say the C yes. word, I said country. That's not even the one I have wait. a problem with. Wait, what's the other C word? Oh, Christ. Why can't you say that word anyway? I don't fucking make the rules, people, man. People it's in England you. are probably getting YouTube striked all the time then. <laughs> they might have different rules over there. That's part of their daily vernacular. Yeah. How are you going to. The thing is, we probably won't get in too much trouble for it without views. But if we ever get <laughs> enough views and these episodes come back, back it could be striked. <laughs> Strike down with great vengeance and furious anger. So <sighs> we're at the uh, lawsuit part. Twist, right? twist one was that the case fell apart in court, and it appeared that they, she was lying, and they, she was lying. And they were lying to get him in trouble. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the first twist. Conceit, yeah. Twist two is Sam staying at the motel post lawsuit, and then he f sees that someone's in his room. There's two different times this happens in this movie, and both times they have very obvious footprints, like they just walk through mud and tar. It's Scooby Doo deliberately. <laughs> yeah, and then walk through the house. That's why it's schlocky as fuck, but it works. It's Scooby Doo with titties, basically. <laughs> mm, that's what we all wanted anyway. <laughs> uh, what? Well, I mean, well, James Scooby Doo with a pair of nice tits on him. James Gunn, <laughs> yeah. James you know Gunn wants to make a rated R. Those little Scooby milkers Doo. on a dog. You know, dogs have lots of boobs, especially when they fill. Oh, what? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nick doesn't know much about animal anatomy. No, I'm like besides why, goats. No, I was just wondering why you were talking. That about reflects positive to positively on him. I, I know. I'm wondering why I'm you were talking about it. We're trying to explain things. Kelly for with champagne. Twist two. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, twist three, Susie is also there. Mm-hmm. And then they have a threesome. Yep. Tornadoes and titties. We do it for the bitches. Having a threesome you, you with tell, Matt uh, Dillon be living the life of like one. You can tell Den- they got Denise Richards to agree to show her boobs just a little bit. Not even just showing them. She got. She had to agree to have Matt Dillon fucking manhandle the but shit out of him and shove part his of face it because all over his it. hands are covering the nipples. He's like, I'm only going to show my nipples for like a half second. What's worse, showing your nipples or having a, someone fondle all of them? Maybe her. she was she, already sleeping with Matt Dillon. We don't know. She upgraded those and she was proud but of. That's him, one so. guy touching versus millions of people seeing. See, we already saw. So there's. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm trying to think of it from an actual woman's perspective, who's not a woman, mind you. I'm trying to think of it that way, though, and I feel like that's... I'd rather show my tits off than have uh, that. Matt Dillon. That was straight-up softcore porn. Like, straight-up. That's mm-hmm. what you would see on Cinemax late night. That that exact much. Yeah, that was very intentional. I mean, Nev Campbell obviously didn't go topless in this at all, so... Bummer. She did another movie, at, like, years later. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What movie? I don't remember the name. We need to stay away from that movie at all costs. We wouldn't want to disrespect her like that. <laughs> um, I need to know this movie now. It was more artsy, that's for sure. Oh. What were they pierced? No, the movie was more artsy. Oh, oh. is she in a movie with pierced Brosnan? <laughs> yes, she will be. <laughs> Nev Campbell. Pierced Let me show Brosnan. you my golden eye. <laughs> gold finger. <laughs> I remember when it came out, everybody was like, "Why didn't she do that in Wild Thing?" It's a vibrating gold finger. I mean, it probably sell. Um. Then Duquette starts stalking them around, basically, and mm-hmm. is like, something's wrong here, you know? They, they did this to fuck us, all three of them. Again, part of the plan, sort of, but not exactly. Changes, you know, adjustments mm-hmm. as we learn, but... Um, I said this movie is basically Cheap Thrills, the movie. It is. It's all, it's all it is, because you see him spying on them... Girl <laughs> fight in the pool, man? Yeah, yeah. Kelly no, and listen, Susie listen. fighting. She yeah. tries to drown he, him. Ev- drown we him. are Kevin Bacon watching this scene. Because he's like, with his camera, he's like... <laughs> and then you see his reactions to everything, and he's like, just I, like... Yeah, I they may as well that have, to happen. <laughs> I want to do a cut of it where you just hear... I add like... <laughs> flap clapping, yeah. And yet you can actually just lift the sounds of... From the Psycho remake where they had the sound <laughs> of that. They didn't have in the original. <laughs> they had the sounds of the ball slaps. So yeah, she's like trying to drown her, and then they start fucking. Oh basically. yeah, they do. Well, that's the thing is when they start girl fighting, you're like, okay, a man wrote this movie. Like this is ridiculous, the and then slaps. it goes even further <laughs> when they start fucking because you're like, this is exactly where you would hope for it to go, but you never thought it would actually go there. And yeah, then it you're goes like, there. Huh, I'll be damned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh, son of a bitch. Um, Who would have thought they'd do that? And Duquette's getting shit for stalking them around because he shows the footage. Well, yeah, my notes on that was just cop shit. <laughs> well, he's in there watching them fuck in the police station. Mm-hmm. And the and the partners watching it too. Um, well, then you have the whole th- the whole threatening thing, like right where Sam's basically like, she's not going to be a problem. So then and then he's got to kill her. They kill Susie. Susie's got to die. Did Denise Richards know that Susie was dead? It seemed or like not dead. No, no, this is part of the multi-layered Actually, scheme Actually, it's... Here. Yeah, no. I, I, sh- I She wouldn't have to, because otherwise there'd be no reason to fake her death the way they did. Yeah, she thought she was really dead, I do believe. Yeah, because wrapping her up in plastic or whatever and whatever else. I don't think Denise Richards knew. I don't know. Which is interesting. Because that's why he told her to go get that thing that out is, of the That car. might be one plot hole that's like, okay, he planned to have them both alive at the end then, without knowing that the other one was alive? Maybe. He just didn't want... One to die. I think but he's going to just let Kelly to but live. But then the other know. girl would expect more money if they were only splitting it two ways. Um, and and it looks to some like yeah. Uh, let's see. Looks like Kelly killed Susie. Basically. Yep. That's what they're trying to. Ray investigates Susie's missing body. And then uh, finds her teeth. Finds the blood matching. And which, lists what's her face's help. Which I don't, Ray, I don't, I don't think dental records work if you only have two teeth. That it was no blood on the teeth matched her blood yeah. type is all they no, said. No, but they talk about getting dental records too, and that doesn't that only matters if you find everything intact. 
yeah. not necessarily. If you have two teeth, that's all it takes to identify it. If you can look at the actual tooth, they, they, they'd go look well, at the old, they'd go they look at the not. old X-rays of those teeth. It was right? only the '90s. I'm sure they could do it then. But I, I know primarily dental records is to look at the alignment of the teeth because it's unique to people. I didn't know if they could actually do that and identify yeah. two separate. Well, that's the whole teeth. premise of the movie, the whole nine yards at the end when they fake his death because he's a dentist and fakes the dental records to match the body. To not and I thought the teeth were still intact. Though. I love that movie, by the way. Yeah, that's a good one. That. We should cover that soon. Mm-hmm. Um, so then anyway, so Ray, does he kill Susan after he kills Kelly? Basically, we just go into the police station and he's like, you know, I had to shoot her. She shot at me, so I shot her twice, I think. Susan? That's uh, Kelly's mom. She's dead? Yeah, they both die. What? Really? Pretty sure that's what they mentioned in there, right? I don't recall that I part. If they so. did, I didn't hear it. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think they showed Susan's death. I think they just talked about it. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Hmm. hmm. I don't think so, because they wouldn't show any of the, like, or you didn't hear any of the gunshots or anything. Yeah, I'm not 100% on that. I don't think so, though. Anyway, but they clear Ray of any liability based on the investigation they did. No, into no, his no. You shooting. see the mom later crying in the police station after oh. she's dead. So yeah, she's oh, alive. okay. Hmm. She's sitting next to Matt Wagner. Or- um, Lombardo is at the beach. He's chilling. He's walking him back up into his place. And Kevin Bacon hangs down. Yeah. Kevin Bacon is fucking naked, showering in there, and they're all buddy buddy. Hey, what's up? He slaps his cock around a little bit, and Matt Dillon is like. Quickly drops to his knees and stuffs his throat. <laughs> that would have been a twist. That would have been a good twist. That been well, a I almost twist. thought it was going that way. The first time I watched this, I was like, holy fuck, they're about to fuck. Like, not, not like they're, the, they're the actual love story. Not in 1998, though. That would have been actually a better fucking twist I than mean, some of these ones. I mean, you say not in 1998, but that movie Crash we watched had James Spader topping Casey Jones... And in the front seat yeah. of a fucking car. But, that was but 80s, that's not like right? a mainstream. That was like, like 96. That was like two or three years before Is it that old? Yeah. Or, or yeah, but new? I think a lot more people have seen Wild Things than Crash. So. Well, for sure. But I'm not saying... Yeah, a controversial good director can do that kind yeah, of shit. Yeah, this is more mainstream, so they but got a limit. This is just more like game. I wouldn't think that, yeah. Now, two girls kissing, that's fine. Mm-hmm. At the have, time, nowadays, it's have, all... You can't have well, two guys fucking. It's, them, it's com- what it comes down to is that it's written by a fucking straight guy, most yeah. likely. Who's like... Fucking, give me my pen. I also got a stroke off while I'm writing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably did a bunch. It's probably weird. Then it probably got even worse when he found out who was cast. Those people in those uh, video games, and they make those hot, naked, half-naked girls, and they're like, do you get erections when you're making your character? Kevin Bacon saying, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the boat, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, we'll go out sailing for a few days. Yeah, it's going to take 24 hours or 48 hours for the... Deposit to clear. Yeah, two days. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that was your twist number. There's, there's so many. Four. There's so many twists. It's comical. <laughs> the twist after twist yeah. after twist. I was like, did M Night Shyamalan write this movie? Because this is what it feels like. Well, that's oh. twist number four. So then, twist number five is that uh, Susie is still alive and kills him after he comes back up on the boat. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And then, it, I don't really call it a twist when she kills him, you know. That's not no. necessarily a twist. But the twist is when somebody's still alive, I, I think. So uh, there's a good solid five it's, twists. It's kind of a twist. Well, that's what I mean. It's borderline, but I, I still don't. You're expecting that, but then he's like, do you think I'd really kill you? I don't know how to sail a boat. And then, you know, obviously. And then you have that scene where they're talking about her, and she had a 200 IQ or some such shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, her brother, yeah. The 200 IQ, you also realize that she... She finds out that Sam's fucking Kelly, and she blackmails them both into all this whole scheme, and then she makes him go meet Ray, because she has evidence that Ray's fucking prostitutes. Yeah, she's been the brains the entire time, but made it seem like he was, and that's how they framed the movie, still. Yeah, they still framed the movie from his perspective, but yeah, it it plays out pretty well, right? And I like how they give you those things in there. And then, again, at the end... uh, Arguably another twist, but not really a full twist, but where Bill Murray shows back up and is handing her the fucking money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like seeing that. That was the, the biggest interest. twist I remember when I first saw it. I was like, I didn't expect the lawyer to be involved for some reason. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Pretty good Solid. flick. Holds up. Oh, yeah. Um, 
next time we need to do a top five movies you can masturbate to if you had to. Like if you had no access to anything else. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, you yeah. could jerk Main, off to like this mainstream. Movie. Yeah, Hollywood. You could yeah. jerk off to this movie. Yeah, like uh, if you had to. I mean, depending on how quick you are, you might need to rewind and watch it again. But, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can watch the part where she comes out of the pool and her swimsuit's kind of see through. Or the threesome scene alone. I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's definitely it's a. Pretty okay there. I, I probably did masturbate this to this when I was a teenager. I mean, if I was a kid, it probably would have inspired yeah. me to, but I wouldn't have been watching it while I did it. Did it. I'd been like, all right, we're going to shut this off for a minute. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take a <laughs> commercial break. <laughs> well, then he pa- we'll be right back after this message is. Well, then he pause it, and it's got that line through it, and you got to hit the tracking button until the line's not right over her nipples. Stay puffed. Marshmallow fluff. Mm-hmm. Brought to you by Party Dive. I knew it. Speaking of teenagers, teenagers and marshmallow, marshmallow cream, cream, I knew Ooh. a girl who was famous for giving guys blowjobs with marshmallow cream. Like famous or was had a reputation of that in your small town. Semantics. <laughs> I got what he was trying to say. <laughs> not world famous, no. Well, that's what I was wondering. Like, it is probably it world means famous? she did it to, Mac- to at least it two. It wasn't or th- McDonald's hamburger. All you have level. to do to get that reputation okay. is do it to more than one person. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> it, and then it becomes like a she does this fucking thing all the time, man. Yeah. Bring over some marshmallow fluff tonight, man. One guy talked about, hey, you know what she did to me, and I'm like, she's not fuck, listening. she did it to you too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, who cares if she is? <laughs> she did it. We're not slut shaming. She can do whatever the fuck she wants if she makes it happy. Yeah, I didn't name her. There's a reason to make blowjob jellies so it's more enjoyable for people that don't just have that natural craving to I prefer syrup. provide oral services. What else? What else we got? I think that's about it for episode 120 of the Frog Brothers mm. podcast. We have 250 videos on our YouTube now, by the way. Nice. Wow. A lot of videos. How We're is nearing that? 600 this is only subs. episode 120. Well, we have... What a, other content do we have? Where there's about 40 episodes of Haunted by Tapes, about oh. 20 bonus episodes, and... How many episodes before it was called Haunted by Tapes? Or are we, re- are we retitled those. Uh, it was called Spectre Vision. <gasps> can't say that. I can say it. <laughs> we can reference the past. We were just asked not to use that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Not like they fucking averagely pop up and listen to our shit anyway. No. <laughs> Um, and if they do, you can uh, come crawl under this desk and fillet us for changing that for you, because uh, you owe it to us. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. I want Elijah Wood here, with a big ribbon on his head, and mm. knee pads, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Polish the chrome, <laughs> lay some carpet, and that guy, the old man in basketball. Exactly. Oh, in you <laughs> want to uh, polish my lobby floor? <laughs> mm-hmm. Classic. All right. Make sure you like, subscribe, social medias if you're not already there, and uh, come hit us up if you want to come to, come to Texas. the summer of Santa Carla in San Antonio, Texas. Subscribe to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Podcast. I just made a post on Patreon tonight. What was it? It's about symmetrical movie stacking. Oh, well, there you go. Well, we also have four commentaries up there so far. We try to do one a month. And we're trying to get more content up there as well, but... Yeah, let us know what you'd want to see on a Patreon feed. We'll uh, make sure we take your stuff into consideration. Good night, everybody. These are my dinner guests. The Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. These are my dinner guests. Frog Brothers. Shut this off. Shut these all off.